Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're back down in Essex with Jeff Garrett as he struggles with the pigeons and the pork pies. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Sunday morning and we're having another go at the pigeons. Um, we've got a nice field of stubble here with a little bit of laid corn on that the combine didn't quite get hold of and I've been watching the last three or four days a nice lot of pigeons build up on it. So I planned everything to get here for Sunday about sort of half 10, 11 o'clock time. Um, what I didn't take into consideration that as it's been the last stubble field that the farmer would send two of his tractors up yesterday to start ploughing it and they've now we've got a plough going to be with us today and at the moment he's probably about 80 yards off the pattern on my left hand side and so I've had to sort of rejig things and get up here early to try and make the most of it and um, we've got still a lot of pigeons here and we've still got a, a fair big bit of stubble to go but we're in this location one very simple reason, um, a railway line at the bottom, a road at the top and nowhere else on the field to, to build a hide. This is the only hedge on a block of ground about 200 acres. So we had no choice on where to go for the hide. So we built the normal net hide, decoys are out there. I've got a little patch of laid in front of me just here where I've got uh, just, at the moment, it's just a blob, a blob of decoys out there on the laid, and I've had one come in already and missed it. So that was a good start. But just fingers crossed, we'll, uh, we'll get the last of the stubble day today and we'll see how it goes on. It's our last chance for some stubble pigeon action, literally as the stubble start to disappear before our eyes. Jeff had better get cracking then. Um, as normal, got the Browning three shot Maxes, which again is uh, becoming a very favourable gun for me on the pigeon front. We're using the Ely Pigeon Select uh, six shot 30 gram fibre wads and just a traditional net hide. Um, we've got the wind, one of the good things about it, we've got the wind in our back, so it means the pigeons are going to be coming virtually straight into us, um, but on the, on the negative side of things, I think we're going to have bits of sun that's going to go right across the front of us, so wind in the back, sun in a, sun in a rise, but as it's the last day on the stubbles, uh, we'll put up with that and we'll see how we get on. With the farmer heading away from our location for now, Jeff can make the most of it by getting the first few pigeons on the ground. Not the first one of the day, but it's the second one of the day. Not bad, but soon there's another force break as the farmer passes the hide. Mm. Once we're sure the decoy pattern isn't about to get ploughed in, we get back to business and now things really start to pick up.
It's the halfway point in our day and time to move the decoys before they get in the way of the plough. With a new set of shooting angles to consider, Jeff studies the flight lines before getting to it once more. Well, while we're being messed about again by the tractor who's beginning to plough up and down the front of the pylon, I think it's time to try one of Humphreys Butcher's Saffron Walden's specialities, their pork pies. Mm, lovely. The pork pies are available, but once the farmer finally departs, Jeff can forget the distractions and focus on the task in hand. And it pays off. Big three timer. Front and front. We're getting a break from the farmer's constant attentions, and that means a very productive spell on the pigeons. The, the flight lines begin to build up nicely. It is, it is about 150 yards below us but we are getting quite a few pigeons now that begin to come in, so we just hit the one o'clock mark. Um, so it's looking, you know, like we might get a few this afternoon. Right, that's another day finished. Um, it's been an enjoyable day today. Uh, it was a little bit of a slow start, um, as with the, uh, obviously we had to wait for the tractor and the plough to come up to us, level with us, and then plough around the pylons. Um, but, uh, well, we got here about, I think probably we set up about half 10, 11 o'clock time. And then by about one o'clock, the tractor had gone by the pylon and it's just moving up the field and the pigeons started to to come on and we had a nice steady bit of bit of shooting right through till we packed up at half past three this afternoon there's still pigeons coming onto the field now but uh, you know work's work's got to be done and 
The good thing about today is that once the tractor and the plough got out of the way and the pigeons started coming, they really started decoying, you know, really nice. Considering we're on a, a bit of plough, fresh bit of plough, and they're just a stub, uh, the headland, um, they did, really did come in nice. Um, we finished up with 73, with just over 100 shots, which I'm quite pleased with. The Maxis has, uh, has done its job today, firing the, um, the new pigeon, Ely Pigeon Select cartridges. The combination has worked well. So uh, all in all, I'm pleased with the day. Jeff there, showing us how it's done. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. GB grabbed two golds at the ISSF World Cup final in Cyprus at the weekend. Amber Hill shot her way to victory in the women's skeet. Then just hours later, Steve Scott followed her to the top of the podium in double trap. After three of the five events, Great Britain sits at the top of the overall medal table. There'll be a full report in the December issue of Clay Shooting. A new copper-based shotgun cartridge from Ely Hawk has hit the market. The Zenith's copper-coated shot is made for good patterning even at longer ranges and with fibre wads. It's initially available in 4, 5 and 6 shot. Head to the Ely Hawk website for more info. EU politicians are set to meddle with firearms laws, again. The European Firearms Directive is set to be reopened, which means we could see new Europe-wide laws formed next year. Deactivated firearms and illegal trafficking will be the main targets of any revisions, but Bass warned that legitimate gun owners could end up bearing the brunt of new restrictions. Staying in Europe, there could be new restrictions on the use of metallic lead. The European Chemicals Agency is preparing a new dossier on the uses of lead, and it could end up affecting shooting. It's not clear exactly what the agency will recommend, but Basque said it's getting involved in the whole process to make sure shooting gets a fair hearing. There'll be a public consultation on any new laws next year. And finally, politicians have performed a U-turn on the country's first urban fox cull. Hackney Council had announced a cull in Clissold Park, but pressure from rights groups compelled it to suspend its plans. Foxes are becoming a risk to the deer population in the park and a health hazard to the public but the council still decided to remove all its fox traps. It said it's inviting practical solutions to the problem. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been... The shooting show.